In this video, we'll take a look at a few conversions that require more than one step to get us to an answer for a question. Uh, so the first example, just to start things out easy, let's think about converting one day into the number of minutes that would be present in that day. So here's how we would set that up. We want to start with, of course, one day. And we want to figure out how to convert this to minutes. So we want to go from a relationship about days to uh, some other unit of time that we know um, that's you know something that's going to pop into our head pretty easily. So what's popping into my head right now is how many hours are there in one day? There's 24 hours. So I'm going to go ahead and use that as my first step in this conversion process. In one day, there are 24 hours. Now, if I was given in my problem a different number of days, I could just plug in two days or three days so we could modify that as needed. So we can see that days will cancel with days. Now, we've converted the number of days, one, into the number of hours. It's gonna be 24. Our next step would be to convert this to minutes. So of course, in one hour, there's 60 minutes. Let's go ahead and plug those numbers in. One hour, 60 minutes. And the final thing left to do is to just multiply through. We've got 1 times 24 times 60 gives us an answer of 1,440 minutes. Okay, again, that was just a simple, uh, simple example to get us started in this process. Let's take a look at now some of the types of conversions using multiple steps that you might see in your chemistry class. Our next example will be to convert 0.24 kilograms to something called micrograms. This symbol is called mu. It means one one millionth. So a microgram is one one millionth of a gram. And in case you're wondering about this symbol, back when I was in elementary school, they taught us how to print with this paper, you know, with the lines. So the mu symbol would be printed like this. Uh, so I want to convert 0.24 kilograms to micrograms. Now, I don't have the relationship memorized, kilograms to micrograms, so what I want to do first is to convert from kilograms to grams, and then I'll use a second step to go from grams to micrograms. So let's take a look at how we would set that up. Start out with 0.24 kilograms. Make that a fraction, divide by one. Next step, let's go from kilograms to grams. Kilograms I want to get rid of. Grams is the unit I want to convert to. Now I need to know the relationship between grams and kilograms. You do need to, in chemistry, memorize these relationships. Everybody should know them. In one kilogram, because kilo means a thousand, there are 1,000 grams. Okay, so again, in one kilogram, there are 1,000 grams. This will allow us to cancel that unit of kilograms. Now, if I stopped at this point, I would have converted from 0.24 kilograms to how many grams that is, but I don't want to stop yet at this point. I want to convert one more step to figure out how many micrograms this mass is. So I need the relationship of grams to micrograms. Now again, micro means one one millionth. So in one gram, there are one million micrograms. So that's one followed by six zeros. I could also write one times 10 to the six. I could write 10 to the six. They all mean the same thing. So you could write it in any of those ways. Unit of grams cancels. I'm left with the unit of micrograms. That's what I'm trying to convert to. Final step is to use my calculator to get the answer. Uh, in fact, this is one where we really don't need a calculator. All that, we're going to do, uh, all that we're going to do to find our answer is to take 0.24 and we're going to move the decimal a certain number of places, right? We need to move it for the 1,000 three times, and for the 1 million, we need to move the decimal six times. So the total places that will move the decimal is nine. So I'm going to move the decimal over one, two, and I can see that I would need seven additional zeros at the end of my number. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine places that I move the decimal. This would be micrograms. And there we go. We've converted from 0.24 kilograms to this value, which would be 240 million micrograms. Um, again, please note that these are equivalent masses. They're the same exact thing. We're just describing them in different ways. The final one that we'll take a look at here is to convert from nanoseconds to megaseconds. So I'll take my value of 1.5 times 10 to the 10 nanoseconds 
put that into a fraction. Now I want to convert from nanoseconds to seconds. Then I'll convert from seconds to megaseconds. Nano means one one billionth. So I need to know how many nanoseconds are there in one second. Because one nanosecond is one one billionth of a second. In one second, there will be one billion nanoseconds. I'm just going to write that as 10 to the ninth. Nanoseconds cancels with nanoseconds. Next step in my conversion process is now I'm going to convert from seconds to megaseconds. Mega means one million. So here's my relationship. In one mega second, there are one million seconds. I'll write that as 10 to the six. Now again, I could write one times 10 to the nine. I can write one times 10 to the six. I can write one with all the zeros after it if I want to put it that way. This is just a little shorter to write it this way. So that's what I'm gonna do it for this example. Now, check my units. Nanoseconds cancels with nanoseconds. Seconds cancels with seconds. I'm left with megaseconds. Also, let's check to make sure all of our relationships are true. Is one second equal to a billion nanoseconds? Yes, that's true. Is one megasecond equal to a million seconds? Yes, that's true. So now I'm ready to go ahead and evaluate the numbers and uh, figure out what my final answer is. Now again, this one, because we're dealing with powers of 10, we really shouldn't even need a calculator to solve this. We can just use our heads and say, okay, I've got 10 to the 10 divided by 10 to the nine. At that point, I would just be left with 10 to the one because I'm just going to subtract this. So I have, after this step, I have 1.5 times 10 to the one, and then I have uh, divided by 10 to the six again. So again, I'm going to subtract my six here from the exponent of one that we just figured out. So I'm going to determine that the final exponent will be 10 to the negative five. So my final answer is going to be 1.5 times 10 to the negative five. And again, our units here are megaseconds.